What's up, fam? Dr. O here, and I want to start off by making something clear. The, the murder of George Floyd and the reaction to George Floyd is not the reason why anti-Semitism is rising in America. It's not the reason why all of these ridiculous... Dr. Claudine Gay is not the reason why anti-Semitism is on the rise in America. They are not... The, and DEI is not the reason why America's on the decline or going backwards and so on and so forth. One of the challenges we're seeing in, in the wake of, of, of Dr. Gay, Gay resigning is that Republicans are winning the narrative war. And this is what people mean even after the Civil War, when they talk about the North won the, uh, won the war, but the South won, won the peace. And what they're talking about, as Dr. Brian Stevenson said with John Stewart's podcast was that, you know, conservatives and the like are, are winning the narrative war. And they've created so many narratives right now that are taking shape. And one of them is they've interjected a slang term into everyday politics and have made that their target. I'm talking about that term woke, right, which has been around for decades. And they've injected that into the whole political sphere. And so they've created, because they don't have real policies in mind, so all they can do is attack. They've created real uh, attacks and real policies around the slang term. And so when they talk about, you know, if you stay woke, you go broke or something like that is one of their their, their models now as they celebrate uh, Dr. Dr. Gay resigning. We have to be mindful of the fact that there is the Republican Party that is clo more closely aligned with anti-Semites and neo-Nazis than Democrats or quote unquote or, or quote unquote liberals or progressives and the like. It has been primarily people who are part of neo-Nazi organizations, some who have been in who are in Congress and in the Senate as well, who have taken money from people who are part of neo-Nazis, anti-Semitic groups, and and some like I said, some members of Congress and and and, and, and the Senate themselves have been part of these parties. So can we talk about that? Can we talk about how uh, Jewish people have been the number one target religiously in this country for for years now? And obviously, black people number one in terms of racially for hate crimes targeting. But a lot of that has come from neo-Nazi groups. And I'm not saying that there are not people who are part of the quote unquote, you know, liberal progressive side who have said anti-Semitic things and 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 have engaged in, in some violence. I would not deny that. But if you look at the scale of it, the overwhelming side of it has come from people who are part of Ellie Stefanik's party. And we know what happened with her at Harvard at the Kennedy School being kicked off the board and the like. We know that there's a vendetta there. And so we have to be mindful of the fact. Look at also how they control the narrative. Notice how you're not hearing many Republicans say things like the George Soros funded Democrats. We're talking about globalism because these are two things that also trigger anti-Semitic uh, ideas and they were throwing those out a lot. And so they've kind of moved away from that as well. And so we have to be mindful as we look at controlling this narrative. And when it comes to, to Dr. Gay, I think we also have to be mindful of that there's a certain type of sexism that's being involved with this as well. Because when the three presidents were brought up, MIT, UPenn, uh, and, and, and Harvard, it was all women. I'm pretty sure that there are some male presidents of universities across the country that have 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 had some mishaps and some missteps and misspoke uh, as it relates to how they've handled rising anti-Semitism as well as Islamophobia on their campuses. They didn't get called. And so we have to be mindful that what's going on with, with, with Dr. Gay, this is an overall reflection. But look, some people are using this as a way to destroy DEI. I've seen people like Fareed Zakaria say that, you know, oh, on these campuses now, you know, we have to return to, you know, objective levels of teaching and standards and, you know, go back to the SAT as if the SAT wasn't biased. And it, it, he's looking at that as, as, as an objective way of going back to how we, you know, handle admissions and the like. The fact of the matter is that when we look at this every single day, what's happening with, with, with Dr. Gay and what's happening across the country is that people are looking for any opportunity to destroy DEI efforts. And when it comes down to it, we have to fight back and we have to fight back harder. That's really what it comes down to at the end of the day. Because another aspect of this that we're not talking about as it relates to Dr. Gay is the level of violence and threats that she was facing. I'm from Massachusetts. My parents, Harvard University graduates, I'm born, you know, born in Cambridge. I'm, I'm from there. There's, there are few places she could go to get away from any type of potential violence that could come her way. And so, you know, the Harvard board mentioned that today. But how, how could she maintain herself? Because one of the tactics that these so-called conservatives use in their, in their attacks on DEI is the threat of actual attacks on people practicing DEI who support it. And so 
we have to understand that this is a this is an attack, and this is also coming off of the affirmative action decision as well. This is an attack on on, on blackness. This is an attack on creating communities where everybody can be celebrated and not tolerated. This is an attack on people who are trying to make America be as good as it's promised for everybody. And so it's, it's extremely unfortunate what's happened with, with Dr. Gay, but this could be a wake up call for all of us who do this work to be louder and more vocal in reclaiming the narrative on what it means to create an inclusive society in this country, or what it means to support and have diversity, equity, and inclusion. Stop letting people use that as a scapegoat because people just want this country to be whiter and lighter every single day and want to ignore our history. So all of us, and you know, people who are out there, I don't believe in the term allyship. This is the time for partnerships. As I talk about in my, in my book, Lies About Black People, this is the time for, if you really believe that there's a problem, is to get out in front of this. It's to get out and speak up on this. And don't think that it's just black folks, it's black they, you know, they're coming for us today, Asians tomorrow, Hispanic the next day, Native American, the list goes on and on and on. These people will not stop until they remove our ability to be in any way, shape or form in some type of power or influence. And so with Dr. Gay, we support her. We respect her. To be quite honest, uh, I'm skeptical about these plagiarism charges that, you know, people can fix things and things can happen. But a lot of these sources have been kind of like anonymous style sources. And I believe that there's no place that will vet you more than Harvard University. So I am skeptical of that. I don't know. I have all of the inner workings of that. But look, this is just part of the attack. We've always been under attack in this country in some way, shape or form. People, when I say we, I mean people who wanted to move this forward, this country forward and bring more inclusivity into everything that we're doing. And so we have to continue this support her. We have to continue to support people who are dealing with these sexist, racist, anti-Semitic, Islamophobic attacks because we have more in common than we do that separate and we can't let them keep us divided. And so we carry on, we push forward. I do firmly believe that this would not be happening if it was a, a, a white man, even if he said things wrong in a setting at, at Congress and even if there were some accusations of plagiarism. I just don't believe that would be the case. But here we are in America where people say as black people, we have to work twice as hard and just to get half as much and just to make Maybe be in positions half as long, not even half as long. It's like a, a quarter <laughs> as long. And so let's keep going. Let's be motivated. Let's be energized in 2024. Let's do more in 2024 to make sure people know that we're here. We're not going anywhere. And we're going to continue to build a coalition to target the ignorance and hate. So like I said, we can continue to build that community where everybody is celebrated and not tolerated. We got this. Peace.